Hello and welcome to my channel. Uh, I'm recording this video on the phone because uh, I need to have these cameras here. Just to show you, right? This video is a show off video. I'm a gear maniac. I'm buying all the gears I can. Crazy, alright? Don't judge me. Actually, judge me, please, so that I can buy some buy less gears. I'm still waiting for the A5100. It's very cheap, 200 euros, 260 euros for the body only. I used one. And I'm gonna use that to vlog and potentially shoot this kind of video in the future so I don't have to use my phone. Actually, my phone shoots really good video. It shoots 4K. And the audio quality is really good even without external mic because it's a phone. All right, so today I'm gonna to talk about the gears I have for 2019 starter pack. How do you start 2019? With these. That's how I start my 2019. All right, let's count all those camera and lenses. Actually, I already got rid of a lot of uh, old gear I had. Some, uh, some of the oldest, my veteran cameras and lenses, my A7, my my oldest A7 I got four years ago, my father bought it for me. And I started vlogging, started photography with that camera. And it's fantastic full frame uh, Sony mirrorless camera. Awesome, awesome, awesome image quality. But the only one, only one uh, downside of that camera is it doesn't shoot 4K. And also it doesn't have Im in-body image stabilization. But anyway, it's kind of out of date today. Uh, for a filmmaker, for a video maker uh, like myself. So I sold that uh, along with the 28 to 70 millimeter lens. Um, it's very good for photography if you are trying to step up from APS-C sensor to go into full frame. It's perfect, very, very nice buff budget camera, budget camera and lens combination uh, to get into full frame. Um, but it's not for me anymore because I mainly shoot videos. So I need something more powerful in, term, in terms of video capacity. All right, so that, that was the oldest camera I had. And then I had the Samyang uh, 14 millimeter lens and the Samyang 85 millimeter lens. And I got rid of those two as well because I wanted to have autofocus uh, because it's a, it was a pain in the ass to shoot Manual focus, should model with manual focus like this. You have to sync up the flash and everything and then focus and uh, hunch your back like this, focus, focus. And then the model moves or I don't know, the camera moves a little bit because it, it's f, f 1.4, then you lose the focus. It's a pain in the ass. So I, uh, I got rid of them and I bought these, the Sony 85 millimeter lens f1.8 so I sacrifice a little bit of the aperture downgrade from f1.4 to f1.8 uh, to get the convenience to convenience to to just to sh make my work easier to, to make my life easier right and um, yeah I actually I haven't used a lot the 85 millimeter lens uh, because after that I kind of just uh, haven't shot a lot of portraits for people so it's kind of um, just sitting on the shelf right now this lens I really should use more um, I should shoot more portrait and also it's very awesome to shoot b-roll because it creates a very nice bokeh and you can shoot something really close up really tight and really beautiful image quality it is one of the sharpest Sony lens you can get on the DxO mark. It resolves. It says it resolves 40 megapixel perceptual megapixel for your camera. So it's gonna be perfect for my A7R2. So that's what I'm gonna try to do more in 2019. That is to shoot more with the Sony 85 millimeter lens. Uh, that is a little bit uh, a goal I'm setting up for myself. All right, moving on, next one. So since I'm a vlogger, YouTuber, I love shooting wide angle. I love the Samyang 14 millimeter lens wide angle view, but it doesn't work any that well anymore because I, I want to shoot better image quality. So I got the 
A6200 to shoot video, shoot, shoot 4K with the Semyon 14mm lens. Um, you use it on a crop crop body. The, the, the view is actually, let me calculate real quick. 14 multiplied 1.53. It's 21.4 millimeter uh, for, for equivalent. So it's actually not that wide anymore. And that's why I got rid of that and got this 10 to 22, this Canon lens. I actually I traded in two semi lenses to get this lens. Um, this lens, while it's super wide, 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter it's equivalent to the uh, about 15. 15.3 millimeter on full frame. It's great. I love the focal range um, and uh, it delivers very sharp results uh, at the longer range. But at 10 millimeter, this lens is super soft on the edge. I've talked about this issue multiple times in multiple videos and I'm tired about it. I don't, uh, I think I'm gonna get rid of this lens. Um, I'm still debating if I should get rid of this because it actually it does shoot interesting shots the wide ultra wide angle it's actually interesting even though the edge is soft uh, you don't actually stare at the edge of the of every shot you just i mean most of the time you focus on the on the center of the frame as it's, it's kind of a human instinct and you look at the things in in the center and you don't actually look uh the things in the on the side right? that is kind of how the eyes work uh, so maybe I can still use it it's just I'm not a super big fan of this lens anymore just because of the, the softness it's driving me crazy I've demonstrated dem demonstrated in multiple videos and you can check it out and then next oh let's talk about this 18 to 105 lens uh, the G lens it's a beautiful, beautiful lens with a uh, constant aperture f4 uh, with a power zoom and uh, internal zoom so it doesn't zoom in and out. So this is pretty much the best lens. It also has image stabilization. So it's the best lens you can get for, uh, for video. It's really nice, versatile video lens. Um, I love it for that. And also at long range at uh, 105, you can also get very nice bokeh at f4. I love this lens for that. It's very versatile. The image quality is decent. Um, and it's, uh, yeah, it's very cool lens. I think it's a perfect kit. This is the best kit lens for your A6, uh, A6300 A or 6500. This, this series, is, I think is the best, best uh, all in one. APS-C lens. Um, yeah, that's it. That's that. But the problem is um, the angle, the 18 millimeter is not, actually not that wide. It's only 20, about 27 millimeter uh, full frame equivalent. So it's a little bit tight when I should flock. That's why I got the Sigma 16 mil f1.4 lens. Uh, beside the wider angle, it also gets Wider aperture means uh, better background blur. It creates very beautiful background blur when you shoot vlog and when you shoot uh, something close up. And also the minimum minimum focus distance is really close. It's about this close. You can get really up close to 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 your subject. And that's that's why people love this lens. And also it's super super sharp. Uh, so I love this lens. I'm gonna use this on uh, uh, for vlogging uh, a lot. And that also creates a problem that both these Sigma and this uh, G lens are fantastic. I love them both equally very much. Uh, so that, that's why I always have difficulty choosing between these two. I don't know which one to use in many situations. It's a, it's a trade-off between the wide angle, uh, steady and the uh, wide angle the bokeh and the, the, the image stable, stabilized and uh, longer reach. It's a, it's a trade-off, but once the A5100 arrived, I think it's gonna be very easy for me because I'm gonna just mount this one on A5100 and this one's gonna stay on A6200. 
uh, for the 4K, if I want to shoot some mural, shoot something, some beautiful sceneries, views, uh, landscape, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use this, use 4K. Uh, instead, if I want to shoot a uh, vlog, if I want to, you know, like doing something like this, I'm gonna use this on the A5100 with a flippy screen. I can see myself. It's gonna create a beautiful bokeh, and I see, I will see exactly where. Uh, what I'm shooting is gonna be awesome. I can't wait for a 5100 to arrive. All right, next, I want to talk about the 50 millimeter lens. It's a Sony 50 f 1.8. Very basic, very elementary level, entry level lens, prime lens. That's a good. It's a good quality, um, but um, it has also drawbacks. It's uh, it's very plasticky. It's very light. Um, so. I don't know, build quality isn't as good as other lenses, it feels cheap. Um, but quality, I mean, the image quality is good, very decent. Um, the drawback is that the focusing, it's a little bit uh, clunky, a little bit slow, a little bit noisy. It, it's exactly what people complain on YouTube. Uh, the reviewers all, uh, all have all agree that this is a very noisy, very slow focusing lens. Uh, so it has weird autofocusing, uh, yeah. So there, there's that. But actually, when I, it it is good enough for my uh, vlog or B-roll or uh, portrait, especially portrait. You don't have to shoot very fast, so you can use this very well. Um, so it creates very beautiful images. I shot it with uh, A7 and A6200 both. I shot a portrait and video, and creates very beautiful images. Um, it's great, but um, it's kind of a, right now, um, it's kind of abundant, redundant. How, how do you say the word redundant? Yeah, it's like something uh, is good, but it's not good enough so that you use it all the time. This is exactly what that lens is. So it's it's really good, but um, I if I want to shoot portrait, I will use the 85 f1.8, it's so way better. And if I want to shoot a video, I probably use some other lenses. So anyway, it's um very limited usage in my hands. So I, I think I'm gonna get rid of it. Feels a little sad though. Yeah. Also, I bought it for quite a lot of money, like two hundred eighty or two hundred seventy. I don't remember. It's quite uh, quite expensive when I bought this, and right now it's much much cheaper. It's uh barely two hundred euros, and it. Uh, I think if I sell it, I probably sell it for uh, 160, 170 uh, at most. So it has, I don't know. That's a fuse bad man. Uh, all right, next, moving on. Uh, we've talked about all these lenses. Now, moving on to A7R2. This A7R2 is what I got for New Year for 2019, exactly. And I've already talked about this camera and I talked about uh, how you should get A7R2 as well in 2019. It's much, much cheaper. And uh, it's, the price is not going to drop very much in for foreseeable future uh, because there's not an A7 IV or A7R4 coming out very soon. So don't worry about price dropping or anything. If you want to buy, uh, you can just buy right now. And has 42 megapixel, uh, awesome sensor, um, shoots 4K, has in-body image stabilization. It's awesome for both photo and video, fantastic, especially for me, because I shoot, um, I have a lot of APS-C lenses, so if I want, I can put it on the A7R2, and they can still shoot 18 megapixel images instead of 10 megapixel only. So that's why I chose this over the A7 III, that's one of the reasons, uh, yeah. And then I have the 24 to 240. This super zoom lens, I already made a unboxing and review video and I shot a lot of video with this lens and I love it for the range, for the range, for the reach, for the uh, versatility. Like I can shoot vlog like this, although it's really heavy though. Um, I can shoot a vlog like this and then I can shoot close up, shoot the moon like this. It's crazy how how much stuff you can shoot with only one lens. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's that. 
So yeah, sometimes I also put my Sigma 16 onto my A7R2 just for the image stabilization and the bokeh to shoot a vlog. So that's also a very nice combination because in uh, crop mode, the, the A7R2 actually shoots very nice 4K footage. Um, yeah, that's it. Uh, that's the sum up. So in the future, in a few days, actually on Monday, I should be getting the A5100 and I'm, I'm going to be... I'm not sure if I get it on Monday because I come back from home, come back from work very late. And I have to go to the supermarket to pick it up. So maybe I'll get it on Tuesday. But anyway, once I get it, I'm going to shoot with it. Shoot uh, exclusively uh, vlogging uh, videos with that camera. And with, uh, I'm going to use a lot of it, Sigma 16. And maybe I'll use the 10 to, uh, no, 10 to, to use the 18 to 105 on it to get a stabilization. Uh, or I can also test out the 10 to 22 because this is um, pretty much manual focusing because it's a uh, adapted lens. So if I can use the flip screen, I can actually see myself so I know exactly where I'm gonna focus. So it's gonna be very helpful. So I can actually use this lens to vlog as well. So I'm very excited for that new new camera, even though it shoots only 1080p, but I think for vlogging 1080p, 1080p is more than enough. At the moment, I can't really edit a very nice vlog with the 4K because uh, just it, slows down my workflow way too much it makes the editing way too laggy so all right that's the update on my camera gears and stuff uh, for 2019 that's how i start I got uh, in the past two years i got rid of a lot of stuff actually in the past one year uh, in 2018 i got rid of all those stuff the a7 with kit lens and two Samyang lenses got rid of all those Oof. And now we are left with this. And who's gonna stand to the end of the year? We'll see. Will I sell the 50 millimeter lens or will I sell the 10 to 22 Canon lens? Which one will I sell them? Which one? Hmm? Make a prediction. <laughs> uh, what do you think? If you had these lenses, which one would you use? Which one would you uh, throw away, sell them, abandon? All right, that's um, that's the update. And thanks for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. Much appreciated. Now I'm gonna go.